Welcome everybody to Forza Motorsport 7 and today we're taking a look at the 2017 Lincoln Continental. Now this is the 10th uh, generation of this uh, car's nameplate uh, which started production in 2016 and uh, yeah it's uh, had a long hiatus which is why I thought this car was uh, long since dead. Uh, yeah it's been more than 10 years since we had a Continental last generation in the ninth generation that ended in 2002 so uh, yeah this uh, car has been around well since 1939 really on and off but yeah this uh, nameplate's been around a hell of a lot a long time longer than the likes of a Corvette or the Mustang so uh, yeah it's as American as you can get quite frankly and uh, obviously uh, Lincoln is owned by Ford which is why this car is based on the Ford Taurus or the Ford Mondeo it's basically the same platform and uh, yeah there's uh, some things to like about this car and then there's plenty of things not to like about this car I personally am not a massive fan of the way this car looks it looks a bit like a Maserati Quattroporte at the front and then an Audi at the rear while being completely bland in between so uh, yeah I like the front kind of but the rest of it it's just a little bit off as far as I'm concerned and uh, yeah it doesn't get much better in the interior and for whatever reason the handles for the doors are right up at the top which makes it look even more bland on the side yeah interior is a little bit of a mess it's a massive button fest quite frankly and uh, yeah you've got your seat buttons on the side of the door for whatever reason and uh, speakers are evidently speakers so it looks pretty shoddy and uh, yeah it's just a little bit of a mess quite frankly I do like the fact that it doesn't have like a uh, shifter in the middle because it is an automatic so it's not like pretending to be manual because the uh, buttons are on the uh, left hand side of the infotainment screen for uh, driving so you've got your park, you've got your uh, reverse, you've got your neutral, you've got your driving, you've got your sport button but apart from that it's a little bit of a mess and that shiny wood looks a little bit fake to be honest but nonetheless, obviously interior doesn't really matter on this game. But just thought I'd show you off. It's got plenty of room in the rear end though. It is a, an extended form of the Ford Taurus. So it's plenty more space in the rear end. And a decent sized boot as well. But yeah, outside of practicality, there's not much going for the interior of the car. Uh, but there is a solid engine underneath the bonnet though. And uh, it's the an EcoBoost engine from Ford, 400 horsepower, 400 foot-pounds of torque from a 3 litre V6 twin turbocharged engine. So, uh, yeah, plenty of power and torque there. Really no problems whatsoever with that amount of power. And the fact that it's got all-wheel drive as well means that it can use all of that power right off the line. So it's fairly quick off the line and uh, making it yeah, way more sporty than you'd expect. Though uh, far from as sporty as the uh, European rivals that this car is probably going to go up against so uh, yeah to see how it performs we're going to take it out onto the track and see what it can do so see you when we get there so welcome to the circuit of the Americas take this car around for one lap and see what it can do so uh, yeah 400 horsepower is certainly not too shabby like I said the all wheel drive system does help keep it all in check the engine, to be honest, does sound pretty good in the lower end of the gears. All well, the turbos do start to uh, overwhelm the engine noise as you uh, go faster and faster. Yeah, this is a way sportier vehicle than I would have expected from Lincoln, which throws up the question who this car is really aimed at. I really don't think young people are going to be too interested in a Continental, and older people surely aren't going to be too interested in a sporty continental like this now obviously this isn't the only version of this car there are two other engines that are less powerful than this that you can get but they're still pretty powerful there's one with like 335 horsepower and another with around 300 so yeah I imagine they aren't too uh, much in the way of you know slow in terms of speed uh, and this is certainly pretty quick on its own right, even though it does weigh 4,547 pounds, which is a 
hefty amount for a, for a saloon car. But it can still do 0 to 60 in 5.281 seconds, 0 to 112.782 seconds, going on to a top speed of 182 miles an hour. So yeah, that 0 to 60 time is, is pretty decent, but that 0 to 100 time is really, really well, quite slow. And even though that top speed is quite high, I don't imagine that'll be in the uh, production, you know, in reality, top speed. I imagine it'll have a limiter at some point. Handling wise, well, it's got quite soft suspension as you expect, which isn't helped by the uh, immense kind of weight. But that all wheel drive system really does keep everything in check, meaning that 400 horsepower and that 400 foot pounds of torque really doesn't get away from you all that easily, to be honest. A little bit of understeer to tell you that you've been an idiot, but outside of that, it's pretty smooth going, to be honest. At the end of the day, it's not very dramatic and hardly all that exciting to drive. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag with this Lincoln. I was expecting a bit more, especially considering you got the might of Ford behind them. But it's just not quite there in terms of looks, interior, and uh, overall performance. Though it is hardly a uh, slow car. It's just a little bit too far behind the uh, European rivals. It's probably going to have to go up against at least an America. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a shame really. But hopefully it's a car that Ford and Lincoln can build upon and improve over the years. But considering it didn't sell all that well in its first couple of years, I'm uh, really not expecting them to keep it around all that long. At the end of the day, it comes down to price. If it's a lot cheaper than the likes of the Audis and Jaguars, then, yeah, I can perfectly uh, see why people would buy it. But if it's around the same price, then it's completely outclassed. So, uh, yeah, that's at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. But me personally, there are far better saloon cars out there that aren't stupidly powerful, that you could easily uh, have more fun with and get a lot more out of. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.